says here we should work in teams. I tend to think of myself as a one-man wolf pack. You are about to enter information overload, a worldwide transmission with Herp Herp Perez featured Breeder of the Week. Here's your host, Jason Ross. What's up, world? Welcome back to H3. I'm your host, Jason Rossi. We are streaming live on RossiReptiles.com and, as always, on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, and the podcast app on iPhones. All right, well, 2012 has come to an end, and we're still here, and we're going to end it with a bang with a very special guest. Brock Wagner from Brock Wagner Reptiles is this week's feature breed of the week. Brock, welcome to Herb Herb Ray. Hey, thanks, Jason. Thank you for having me on. I really appreciate it. No, I appreciate you coming out, man. I know you had a little birthday party earlier, so I really appreciate you taking time out, man. I really do. No problem, no problem. No problem, buddy, no problem. All right, well, you hit that spider GHI, right? I did, I did. I hit uh, the fire GHI and the spider GHI this year, and uh, I think the spider GHI was done by Matt Lear either last year or the year before. I think he, I think he did it last year, if I remember right. So I know I wasn't the first one to hit that, and then, but I think I was the first one to hit a fire, the fire GHI, but I'm not sure. Um, but either way, it was pretty cool. It was really cool, and the, I really like uh, the GHI morph. And I listened to your, you had Matt Lear here on on your uh, Her Purple Ray, didn't you? I think I listened to him. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, that's okay. correct. Mm-hmm. So yeah, the GHI I'll is kind of a, a fun new morph. Kind of different, kind of does some wicked things. That you've seen the uh, Mojave GHI, right? Yeah, that's another one of my favorites. Yeah, yeah, I picked up, I picked up one of those this year, and uh, he's about 560, 580 grams, and I'm just getting ready to introduce him into the breeding rotation. And uh, one thing that I was talking to another big breeder today, and he has one as well, and he's bringing it to uh, some Mojaves, and uh, his uh, you know, thinking is he thinks it's going to create the, like the, you've seen the cow pied, the black pastel pied, uh, you have you seen, or the all, or the super black pastel pied that Ian Ganowski made. Be, have you seen that? You know what I'm talking about, Jason? Yes, sir. The panda pied, I sure do. Yep. Okay, the panda pied, the, the, you know, some people are thinking that if we combine the Mojave GHI with a, uh, with a Mojave or make this, you know, the super Mojave, that maybe we could do the half and half and do like a panda pie. Do you think that's possible, or what's your thoughts? What do you think will happen when we breed a Mojave GHI to a Mojave? What's your thoughts? I don't know, man. I'm always asking the big guys, like, when you add another gene to that white snake, you know, when, when are we going to start seeing some pattern on it? And they're, you know, basically saying it washes out. But I don't know about this GHI gene. So, you know, what do you think? I, you know, I'm not. I'm not sure. Um, you know, uh, Jason, I, I've been doing this. The uh, next year will be 10 years with the ball python game, hard and heavy for me, which is pretty exhausting. I'll wear a guy out, but I can tell you this. Um, you know, I've seen a lot of combos I've hatched out like with the champagnes and stuff. I was the first one to do some of the, you know, first champagne combinations, and it was amazing to see how how that washed out, how the champagne really washed out, like with the pastel, for example. Um, back in 2008, I was the first one to do the pastel champagne, and when I hatched them out, they looked like blue-eyed Lucy's, you know, because all champagnes I hatched out prior to that all had black eyes with a red pupil. And then I hatched out these, you know, the, the pastel champagnes, and they came out perfectly white with blue eyes, and it just didn't make any sense. And I remember calling, you know, several other breeders, and uh, I remember – uh, Amir Saliani was telling me, like, those look like, those are blue-eyed Lucy's, man. And I was like, well, it came from a citrus pastel that he had sold me. And I was like, not unless your citrus pastel is for Lucy. I don't know how this could have worked, you know. So it was, it's amazing how how the genes are kind of fooling us and how they, you know, with our, they're, we're just washing some, you know, snakes out by adding five or six genes in there. I mean, Kevin McCurley does some great work, and he has some really cool snakes. And I think he's got six, seven, eight genes in some of them. And, they kind of all blend together. You know, the snakes are starting to look like a pur- purple or light-colored, you know, worm in some cases. So I think it's kind of hard for us as breeders because we can't tell exactly what's all inside of the, you know, the genetic, excuse me, the genetic makeup of the snake. So, you know, that's kind of kind of getting to be difficult. I'm sure you've seen that too, haven't you, Jason? Uh, I see it in the videos, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, you know, not yet. I'm only... 
four years into the game, but still that's no excuse. But, you know, 10 years, man, that's, that's definitely an achievement, man. That's definitely knowing you're doing it. You're doing it 10 years. You're not doing it for other reasons, but the love of it. Yeah, yeah, that's one thing, Jason, that, uh, you know, people, I've seen a lot of people in the ball python industry come and go in the last, you know, almost 10 years. And I can tell you, you know, people can say that people get into it just for the money or, you know, it's all money-driven, this, that, and the other. But I can honestly tell you, you know, yes, the financial reward is a good thing, but people don't understand, like, a guy like myself who has, you know, hundreds of snakes, that you don't do it because, you know, just all for the money. you got to love snakes. Like me, I've loved snakes my whole entire life. And I, I love reptiles, but I really love snakes. And I used to catch garter snakes back home here in Nebraska and uh, bring them in when I was, you know, four or five years old. I'd have them in buckets and bring them in. And my mom and my grandma would whoop my butt because I wasn't allowed to bring them in the house. But I, I still kept doing it all the time every time I could catch one. And so you don't, you don't do this, you know, with hundreds or even 80 snakes, you know, you don't do that unless you really love snakes. And I've seen people, Jason, that have, you know, got into ball pythons because they thought, oh, this is a great industry. This is a great, you know, financial way to make money. But if they didn't, they didn't love the snakes, you know, they didn't enjoy having snakes. And so they pootered out and, you know, they kind of, you know, left the business and went away. They don't have snakes anymore. So you really got to enjoy snakes to do this, especially at the level that a lot of people are doing it these days. You know, there's a lot of people with a lot of snakes here in the United States. I'm sure you're aware, right, Jason? Yes, sir. And cool. you're aware of what they're trying to do, trying to pick off a species one by one, it seems. Yeah, that scares me. That scares me. I'm I'm huge. Uh, I'm a huge gun guy. In fact, I, I once uh, had a gun business, and, uh, and guns are almost my first passion. I mean, it's right, right there with snakes. And long story short, it's starting to scare me when I watch the news here at night. I see, you know, what's going on with uh, the gun rights and, and stuff like that and what people are wanting to do. And, and the same thing with, with reptiles. It's uh, it's crazy. I mean, every city has, like, different ordinances. Now, my city is fine for – I can have as many ball pythons as I want. I've, you know, I've been in contact with our local animal control and all that, and I can do that. But, like, if I wanted to have Burmese, they would not let me have that, or reticulated pythons. They would not let me have that. And uh, I've actually been in homes where they've confiscated. I've seen them confiscate Burmese and, and retics from people. That's our local animal control. And uh, that's kind of disheartening, you know, especially if the animals are being properly taken care of and they're not hurting anybody. It's just somebody has them as a pet and, they just, you know, the neighbor didn't like it and that type of situation. It's kind of really, it's really disheartening, isn't it, Jason? Man, I tell you, it, it feels good to hear you talk about the, the stuff we're seeing coming at us at the gun control aspect. It's it's really amazing how they can just take something and twist it for their agenda to yes. disarm the, the disar- disarm the American public. It's it, it, yeah, it's it's, it's 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 bull crap, and you know, and we can debate this all night long, but. You know, I have small children, and they're going to be going to school. My my oldest is four. She's turned four today, and she's going to go to school you know, in two years. And, you know, everyone can say, oh, you know, we need to take all these guns. And I'll tell you, I, this is a little fact that I don't know the media portrays this a lot, but if every person in the United States that had a gun or whatever, they, something I, I saw, that they said if everyone everyone that owned a gun in America stood outside, that they'd be like, we that that conglomerate of people would be like the second largest militia in the United States or in the world. Like we'd be like the second largest military because there's that many gun owners in America. And so from a, you know, a logistical standpoint, the the military and law enforcement couldn't disarm that many people in in the United States. You couldn't take those guns away. And being in law enforcement, I can tell you that the bad people are always going to get guns. They're going to find a way to get get a gun, you know, and that's, that's the God's honest truth. So, and it's, it, it sucks. And it's the same thing with with our with our reptiles. I don't think that anybody should be able, allowed to tell me what kind of a reptile that I 